presentation was fantastic because of the fact that he played to his strengths. Knowledge leads to confidence. Who here remembers this guy? William Hung. Right? American Idol. His uh, presentation on American Idol left some to be desired. However, what he said to the judges, Paula Abdul says, how did you think you did today? And he said, I got up here and I did my best and I have done the best that I've ever done in my life. Thank you for the opportunity. Isn't that beautiful? Right? Confidence leads, knowledge leads to confidence and confidence leads to a career as a singer even when you flunk out of American Idol. He's had his 15 minutes of fame, but there you go. And I'm going to make this really hard for the person in the video in the back because I pace back and forth. Right? Um, know your pitch. Get it down. You've got to be like John Smoltz here. Awesome closer, right? His job, come in towards the end of the game, throw a couple dozen pitches, and end the game. Your job as a presenter, come in, knock their socks off, drop the mic, and walk out. Let's talk about some tips and tricks. Stage presence. Gene Kelly. Awesome example of stage presence. Who here has seen Singing in the Rain? Right? That scene where the song Singing in the Rain, he's swinging on lampposts, he's splashing in puddles. Stage presence. He uses every square inch of that stage. The other song in that movie that I think of is Make Him Laugh. Another great example of stage presence. Using the dummy, using the sofa. Brilliant. Right? How you present is not the number one. Number one is knowing your, your topic. But a very close second is your, um, your presentation form. Right? You need to connect with your audience. Make eye contact. If you're not a person who can make eye contact with just anyone, invite a friend to come sit in the third row. Make contact, eye contact with them. Right? Someone you know that you can make eye contact with. If that doesn't work for you, um, Mark, uh, I forget his name, Mark Domus. He's a Dominus. yak at, what's that? Dominus? Dominus, Mark Dominus does a presentation called Conference Presentation Judo, which a lot of this is actually ripped off from. Um, but he has a stuffed octopus that he brings with him for his tutorials, and he sets it in a chair. So if he gets nervous, he looks over and sees his octopus and paying attention, and he feels better. <laughs> <laughs> Shut the dark. This room worked out that we could turn off the one light that was shining on the screen. But if, you were, if you're in a location where projector turns on, lights turn off, that's the definition of a broken projector. Projecting in a dark room leads to, oh, what, right? Especially if you get a warm, dark room with a projector fan rolling, it's going to, someone's going to fall asleep. You're not going to keep your, your, uh, your audience engaged. Shun the podium. Steve Jobs, an amazing presenter. He does not stand behind a podium reading his laptop screen. He doesn't anymore. <laughs> he did it. He's still giving great presentations. He's still giving great presentations. Um, but you, you get what I'm saying, right? You, you get the... Uh, shun the podium. Make use of the stage. Right? This is an interesting location for a presentation. It's a science lab. But I'm not married to my keyboard. Invest in one of these if you're going to give a couple of presentations. This thing cost me 15, 20 bucks. Little presentation remote. It has every feature you need. It has a forward button, a back button, uh, a button that maps to enter, and a button that maps to escape, and a button that maps to the letter B. Letter B, we'll get to that in a minute. Use a presentation remote. That way you don't have to come back here when you need 
to change the slide. I can do that from across the room. You need to start strong. You need to get off the gate and go to it. Who here has heard the adage, tell them what you're going to tell them, then tell them, and then tell them what you told them? Don't do that. Get to the point, stay there, embellish. Right? Start strong. Uh, Mark Dominus has an example of this, uh, of a, an XML presentation. What is XML? XML is extensible markup language. XML was founded by blah, blah, blah. X, like 15 slides of XML is. Eats up about 10 minutes or 15 minutes of his presentation. And then there's the meat of the presentation is condensed, right? So start strong. How long should your presentation be? I love this quote. A good speech should be like a woman's skirt, long enough to cover the subject and short enough to create interest. <laughs> right? It, it, Winston Churchill, it's, it needs to be short. You need to keep on topic. Right? Use your presentation software. The, um, the, says, the presentation software, uh, OpenOffice is an impress, sorry, the OpenOffice version, or the LibreOffice, has, all, has this feature, PowerPoint has this feature. If you hit the letter B, it blanks your screen. So if you need to turn the screen off, hit the letter B. Then the focus comes to you. Uh, OpenOffice and PowerPoint also have the letter W, which puts a white screen up instead. So if you were presenting or projecting onto a whiteboard, you hit the W key, and it's bright white instead of dark white, so you can write on it and still see it. Cool feature. Uh, the software I'm using doesn't, but I'll be patching it, so it will. Right. So blank your screen. Another one is, someone asks a question like, what was that bullet point three or four slides back? Hit escape and go through, you leave the presentation, right? And you go through that mess. No, you hit the escape key, most presentation software has a slide overview or an outline form. PowerPoint has it. OpenOffice and Press has it. Slides.com has it. Slides.com has it. You too. Let's check. Yeah. This is Reveal.js, which is from Slides.com. So this is what I'm using. Choose your slide. And then press Enter, and you're back. Okay? So there's a use your software to its, its fullest. Those features are great. Okay. Now let's talk about content. Your content needs to be engaging. Good slides. Let's talk about good slides. Good slides have little to no text. Uh, use photos, not clip art. You need to be aware of copyright. Right? If you're looking for photos to use, <coughs> for Creative Commons licensed media. You can find it in Google. Flickr, and any of the other places that you search for images. They usually have a feature that says, hey, licensed for reuse. You'll notice that a couple of my photos have a little source tag at the bottom. Those were Creative Commons by attribution. That's the attribution. So I can use them without having to ask. Diagrams need to have thick lines. Use two pixels. Slides that use color grab attention. Slides that use emotion grab attention. Mark Dominus, again, coming back to his, his uh, conference presentation, Judo, whenever he says the word bullshit, he shows a picture of a bull defecating. <laughs> it's gross. It evokes this visceral disgust. He uses the emotion. He also talks about a really cool trick of, uh, of using a happy baby, right? But good slides aren't read to the audience line by line, right? So this is not a good slide. If I were to give this data in a better form, I would do it like this. Slides use little to no text. Diagrams need to have thick lines. See how different that is? Boom, it snaps. This is from a presentation I did on Unix permissions. Use emotion, the sneaky trick of using a happy baby. Right? 
you look at this picture, I have a you know, fondness for these two, but um, you look at this picture and you can't help but go, aw, right? Good slides use emotion, use color, break things up. Here's an example of a slide. This is from an actual presentation that I uh, went to. Um, it was in Tallahassee, Florida. It was a, I believe it was a VMware lunch and learn type thing. It's 95 degrees and about 80% humidity. <laughs> there are 25 people packed into a small conference room. The lights went off. The lights went off. The projector went on. What happens when it's 80% humidity and uh, you um, turn the lights off? Everyone falls asleep. Especially if it's right after lunch. Yes. This was a lunch and learn, so it was right after lunch. And um, you can hardly see it here on this projector, but this slide is packed with information. <laughs> the thing that's funny is this slide was immediately preceded by new blah 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 is very easy to use. <laughs> and then he shows this and you go, uh, I don't think you know what that word means, right? I don't think that word means what you think it means, right? This is another one, again, broken projector, but this was at Astrocon in 2007. This is one of the guys there presenting his product. He's pitching it to you. <coughs> and one of the things he's pitching is its wide compatibility with all of the other products out there. So as he said a name of a product or a company, either their logo or the product came up on the screen with a little animated pop. It was awesome. Like, the slides are there to support the speaker, not the other way around. It was a great presentation. Use different media. This is one of the coolest things I have ever seen. It's a TED Talk by a woman named Jill Bolte Taylor. She is a neuroscientist, a brain scientist. She had a stroke. Think about that for a second. A neuroscientist that had a stroke. As her brain was shutting down, she's going, oh, there went that piece of my brain. Oh, there went that piece of my brain. Like, isn't that, I mean, it's not cool that she had a stroke, but it's cool that she was able to use that stroke to actually further science. Right? Her presentation, her TED talk, I'll, I'll just let the, the presentation speak for itself. If you've ever seen a human brain, it's obvious that the two hemispheres are completely separate from one another. And I have brought for you a real human brain. This is a legitimate human brain. I complete with spinal cord and everything. Whoa. What did we learn from this little snippet of her presentation? What, what was she trying to, to drive home? The, of the, separation. The, separation. the separation, right? She shows you a literal brain and how it falls apart, right? The entire remainder of her talk hinged on the fact that the brain processes things different, differently on each hemisphere. You got that from that little... If she were to just say it, or put up a diagram of it, it wouldn't be as 
powerful, right? It wouldn't be as sticky. Maybe the wrong choice of words, but something. <laughs> but well, it's, visceral. It's, it's visceral, right? It's a, it's a, it's a. You now know that each hemisphere of your brain functions differently, and that's going to stick with you for a while because every time you see someone put on a pair of rubber gloves, you're going to think back to this, right? It's it's it's, it's sticky. It's it's visceral. Here's another good example from another TED talk. Uh, this is Bill Strickland. Uh, talking about his charitable causes. So, the purpose of his presentation is talking about the charitable work that he's doing and trying to get more people to be involved in the charity. So he got Herbie Hancock to come and play some jazz piano under his presentation. I'm not saying that when you're talking about the next new um, Pearl Library, you need to get Herbie Hancock to come play, but the purpose of his presentation is to pitch you to help his charity. Music is a great conveyor of emotion. Herbie Hancock at the piano, even more so. Right? Great way of knowing what we need to do uh, to liven our presentations up. All right, now let's talk a little bit about actual presentation methodologies. Right? There's a presentation methodology called the Takahishi method developed by a guy in Japan who didn't want to pay for uh, PowerPoint. He got large sheets, like four feet by four feet, and put one word, one big word per slide, and he would rip them down one by one as he was making points. Right? Beautiful methodology. Another great waste Japanese paper, uh, the <laughs> waste of paper, uh, recycling, whatever. But you can do the same with PowerPoint, right? I just did. The other one is is uh, this method also developed by another Japanese man. Um, he's essentially the uh, Japanese Regis Philbin. So he's he hosts the the morning show that, you know, it's like 10 o'clock, it's, it's Good Morning America, it's Good Morning Tokyo or something, right? And he does presentations on the topic of the day. And what he does is he, he actually does these in an analog format. So he has the, the presentation printed up on an easel and then a piece of paper slapped over certain words with masking tape. And then as he gets to each thing, what's this doing to you right here? This, this blocked out, right? It, gives you, it makes you curious, right? You're like, well, what's this method called? It's called the Monta method. Right? So that's what he does. It, the Monta method. It's a great methodology for reeling people in. So that's a very important thing that you can learn. You can learn, learn all these different presentation methods. Uh, there's a whole slew of other methodologies out there. Find one use it, mix it up, do whatever you want to do. Another important piece is having a product. I said earlier that good slides support the speaker, not the other way around. The better your slides are, the worse they're going to be as a handout. Whenever when so someone comes up to me and says, hey, can I get a slide deck? I go, no, but here's a handout. Make a handout, make a product. Especially if you're in some sort of presentation where people are coming to pay money to see you. Having a product to give them, especially if their company is paying them, you can say, well, I learned about presentations at Utah's, and here's the handout of the things that I learned. Right? And the boss goes, oh, that was money well spent. He learned something. Right? A little different than swag. right? 
It doesn't need to be a lot. A page. A list of URLs of references. Like, more content equals more better, right? Here's the thing, how fast should you go? If you're giving a presentation, especially something like a tutorial, you need to move fast enough that 75 to 80 percent of the people think you're moving too fast. That's kind of counterintuitive. But if you don't do that, you're going to bog down and things are going to get slow. Right? How do you keep people in place? Well, you have sync points. Or if you see you're losing everybody, you blank the screen and say, so let's review. Or you, you mix it up. If you're standing up, you sit down. If you're sitting down, you stand up. Um, if it's getting warm, you take your jacket off. If it's getting cold, you put your jacket on. You do something to stop, gather, start. Right? Um, tips and tricks. Let's talk about um, some of the things that you can do to make your presentation better. Towards the end of your presentation, you should probably have some accordion slides. Slides that you can snap through real quick that aren't necessarily disposable, but they're value added. Right? So that gives us the ability, if um, the presentation before us went long, we can say ba 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 ba. Right? Here's another trick always end on the last slide. Even if you have to skip slides to get there. It's a psychological thing. If you went bop, 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 oh no, we're running out of time, bop, 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 ah, we're out of time. That leaves you disappointed as a, as a listener, right? But if you go bop, 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 ah, we're running out of time, bop, 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 thank you, you feel the conclusion, right? So always stop on the last slide. License your slides. Make sure that there's a, sp a specified license. This isn't always an issue. Um, this presentation is Creative Commons by attribution, share alike. So you can take it, run with it. Everything that I've used as far as other media is Creative Commons by attribution. Uh, some of them are non-commercial, um, but there you have it. Use a license. Things to look out for. Uh, this is very uh, important. Uh, you need to be uh, on the lookout for the guy in the second row. I'm not specifically mentioning anyone specific. Um, but the guy in the second row is that guy who goes to a presentation to have a conversation with the presenter. And one of the worst examples of the guy in the second row is this guy right here. Just, I'm glad that this guy doesn't exist anymore, but I was, I was a really bad guy in the second row. Like, but, 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 and, and, no. Uh, how do you manage a guy in the second row without making him feel like he's been slapped? That's something that just takes a little practice of, yeah, that's awesome, or yeah, you have a lot of great questions. I'm, I'm not picking you out here. You have a lot of great, I'll, I'll talk to the NPC. You have a lot of great questions. Uh, why don't you see me afterwards and we'll, we'll discuss a little bit more of that, right? That's a great way of, like, you know, the judo of using their, their momentum against them, right? Other things you need to, to look out for and be aware of. The first time I did this presentation on powerful presentations, I had my pin in my hand and was clicking away like mad because I was nervous. And one of the people came up to me and she was like, that was a great presentation, except I wanted to take the pin and stab you to death with it. <laughs> <laughs> so empty your pockets. Um, change. No change in the pockets. You're going to jangle as you walk. Or you'll find yourself putting your hand in your pocket and playing with it to fidget. Fidget with your remote instead. Doesn't make much noise, right? And this doesn't look good. <laughs> Ooh, here's a big one. Use the bathroom beforehand, especially if you're doing a longer tutorial. Right? And if you're mic'd up, make sure you turn it off. <laughs> Some great resources for you. Presentation Zen, a guy named Guy Kawasaki. 
uh, wrote a book called Presentation Zen. It's a little bit on the pricey side, 45 bucks-ish, but if you do presentations regularly, you're gonna earn that money back quick. He also has a blog, Presentation Zen. Great stuff. This is where I learned about the Monta method, the Takahishi method, pardon me. He just dissected the new Star Wars trailer and talked about how it was good presentation. Beautiful blog, Presentation Zen. Uh, conference Presentation Juno by uh, Mark Jason Dominus. About 60, 70% of my talk was inspired or actively stolen from that talk. Um, great presentation. Lightning talks. One thing that Twitter has taught us is that restrictions build growth, right? The more we restrict something or limit something, the better the end product becomes. 120 characters? What? Lightning talks, get it done in five minutes, cuts all the crap, right? You gotta get to the point, you gotta stay there, and you gotta embellish. So learn about lightning talks. Ooh, turn off your cell phone. Turn off the notifications on your desktop. So there's not a little bubble popping up here saying, ding, do I am, bing, do I am, right? Turn that stuff off. And be yourself, be relaxed, and enjoy what you do. Thank you. Any questions or comments? Well, thank you very much. I have, what's that now? Do you have a handout? That I do, right here. Um, I did not get a chance to staple them, but there's a stapler right here. For those of you who want to staple it, it's three pages long, and it has all the URLs. No, it doesn't. Well, that is a fail on my part. Um, Presentation.goosebach.com. Uh, I just pushed this up to that. It uh, may not be there yet. Presentation.goosebach.com. You'll find a copy of the slides, a copy of the handout, a copy of the outline that I followed to keep me up to date. Again, thank you very much.